All right, guys, what is up, everybody? We're ready to go. So quick shout out to the sponsors of the video. As you know, I'm doing these videos in partnership with Delta Exchange. So give Delta a shout out, check them out on Twitter, use the link in the description. You get 10% off of trading fees using my link. So you click the link, you sign up. And if you deposit, you get up to $30,000 in deposit bonuses. So all you got to do is go on there, sign up. You can get up to $30,000 of extra money to trade with, which is pretty cool. With that being said, Thank you to the Delta team. Check out all the info in the description of this video. Let's get into the charts here. So I'm going to start with the weekly chart. And I just want to kind of show you guys a couple of things that I'm seeing on the weekly. Some things to pay attention to, right? Because what we don't want to do is get complacent when the market is not just going straight up vertical. We got to be prepared for pullbacks. I do still believe that we are in a bull run. The question is, is are we going to pull back deeper than this kind of 55K region? where we dumped to the other day and then continue to go up or is there potentially a deeper pullback coming? So I'm gonna kind of give you guys my thoughts on Bitcoin, some very key levels that I'm watching in terms of, okay, are we getting super bullish again, getting super bearish again? Because I do think that the levels are pretty clear in terms of you know where you wanna kind of set your bias. There's definitely like a very, very clear weekly kind of setup that's played out now multiple times here on Bitcoin. It makes me wonder why I even bother trading interday because the weekly chart on Bitcoin has been, you know, super fucking clean to trade. So what we're going to talk about here are a couple potential weekly setups. First thing I want to point out here, and I know this is a bit of hindsight analysis, obviously, but we had our weekly SFP at the May high or the April high, excuse me, right? So we had our move above break market structure, the downside return to that order block, and then we sold off, right? So that was the top on Bitcoin. Bitcoin. If you actually go back, we had a very similar top form, not on the weekly chart, but on like the daily back in 2017. So we had kind of our, you know, three pushes. We had our run above. It wasn't an SFP, but it was a deviation, right? We went above the level, broke down immediately after. There's your break in market structure. And then we came back, retested that order block, and that was the top. So very similar structure played out here. Everyone's like, oh, this top wasn't like the previous tops. It kind of was. It was just spread out a little bit more. It took a little bit more time to develop. But in terms of the structure, to me, it looked very similar. We had that move here like this, right? There's your deviation above the high. If you want to see it as like similar to the 2017 top or whatever, break above, right back below, break market structure, come back and retest boom, and it shit the bed. That was the high there. And basically every major move on Bitcoin has essentially been a weekly SFP. Weekly SFP at the low, boom, not quite an SFP there, but pretty damn fucking close. And it might've been an SFP on other exchanges, but same idea, right? Deviate below the low, reclaim, launch. And we're now putting in a weekly SFP to the upside here, or we have something to watch here on Bitcoin. And this is what I had marked on the initial chart is that weekly SFP here, we get a move that is a return to here, that would have been something that I would look at shorting. Now, would I still consider shorting this potentially, but the difference here between this and this is the way that this candle closed. We did close as a swing failure pattern of this key weekly low. So if you go watch my video from last Sunday or the condensed stream that I uploaded the next day, we did have this key weekly range low marked and we did manage, I said at the very least, right? I wanna see the bulls close back inside this weekly range as an SFP and we did get that. And so right now what we're looking at here is this weekly range, there's your high, there's your low and we've now done this, ran the high, now we've ran the low. If you're bullish, right, you really want to see us hold above here. Really, really, really want to see us hold above here and trade above here. Because if we lose this weekly low and we manage to close above it, now remember, daily market structure is broken. Three day market structure is broken. All the lower time frames are bearish in market structure. However, the weekly managed to close as a swing failure pattern. I don't think we should sound the alarm bells yet, like it's fucking over, but we do want to be very aware that we just about closed below this level. So any sort of pullback here, I want to be very careful and be cautious up into this zone, much like we were here, right? So we had the big breakdown and then everyone got bullish again. And then what was it? It was just a lower high. So what I'm paying attention to here for the next couple days, couple weeks here 
is if we put in a lower high here, I want to be paying attention up into this 62 to 65k range because we've got that weekly bearish order block here we've got our daily bearish order block here right into the sweet spot after a daily break in market structure so if we come up here you got to be cautious if this is going to have a larger pullback down to here which is my next area of interest kind of 52 which is here down to about 50 to 48 so 48 to 52k remember i'm talking about the weekly and daily time frame so these are going to be larger ranges i'm not just going to enter my entire trade at 52, but I might buy some at 52, some more at 50, some more at 48, and then have some stink bids lower. What I want to be careful with is a lower high potentially forming in this area, right? Because we have our daily break in market structure here. So that would give us our deviation, weekly SFP, daily market structure break, pull back lower high and this next leg that would be initiated on the daily that will lead to that weekly market structure break and that's when we're starting to look at you know an even larger correction right so if we get some sort of weekly market structure break and then another pullback right you know, that's going to be the kind of move that leads us down here, or it might just accelerate through here. I would have been more confident shorting up here. Like if we get a pullback here this week, I'm still going to look for reasons to short it. I would have been more confident, however, in that short is if we broke weekly market structure. So see here how we broke weekly market structure. So when we return to that order block, I was extremely confident that we were going to make a lower high. And if you go watch my YouTube videos from back then, if you go watch my Twitter posts from back then, I was predicting the lower high here and then you can see on the daily we got that confirmation pull back right into the sweet spot we even got like a daily SFP right into that resistance area right so th there was lots of confluence there to get short so I'm looking for a similar type of move here on Bitcoin here I would have been more confident if the weekly had broken market structure so the fact that the weekly closed as an SFP I think there's a chance maybe we just continue to range or maybe we come up here consolidate and then break out because if the weekly would have closed below this level I would have been taking this trade like a big swing trade something like that and you could dial in on the lower time frame to get a tighter risk reward, right? So like on the daily, for example, the trade would probably look like this. Better risk reward because it's on a lower time frame. So my invalidation is closer to my entry. That's what I would have been looking for. Something along those lines. If the weekly had closed as a break in market structure, it didn't. So there is a chance that this trades back into the range and then continues higher. What I don't like is the low time frames all the way up to like the three day chart here have all broken market structure to the downside, including the daily. So the daily is now in a bearish trend here. What I also don't like is the fact that we broke market structure on the daily. We had this little pump and we came right into the first area of resistance. 60k big figure right 60k and we have this bearish order block that formed a new low and that is the bearish retest if we break down from here we are absolutely going to at least here but I'm probably looking to bid this zone 48 to 52. That would be the area where I'd be looking to catch a dip down into here. Maybe we get a reaction here. Maybe we don't down into this order block here. That would be kind of my higher time frame idea. Like if this is it or if we go up. Even if we go up from here, this is my buy the dip zone, this big gray box. And then I would also probably put some earlier bids at 52. So 52 down into this big gray box, which goes all the way down to 44,000, right? So be aware, it doesn't mean you have to buy 50 and hold it all the way down. You can layer in, or you can just wait till we get down here and look for some bullish market structure and then get involved, right? You don't have to just buy on the first touch. This is an area, if you go watch my order block video, that I want to be a bull. So what does that mean? I'm looking on the low time frame for clues that the trend is shifting. You have to realize people want us to go straight to like, you know, 80K or whatever. And, and I obviously do too. But, you know, we went up quite vertical here. Yeah, we had a down candle in the middle. But other than this down candle, right, we had three out of the last four months were big body green candles to the upside. We do have a monthly SFP, obviously. So be aware of that as well. But we had some big body expansion candles here, the upside. So if you pull your fib, from the low that we made here up to the high, if this is the leg, the next swing, it's totally fine if it happens here, right? That is not a bad look for us to come down here and then make another leg, right? That's just an uptrend, high time frame. So I'm totally okay 
with this kind of scenario. I'm just showing you guys some things that I'm seeing and why I say, you know, you should express some caution because this is not the all time high breakout that we wanted to see, right? We didn't want to see us just barely break above all time high and then start putting in bearish market structure right there. I do think we ultimately trade higher, but it doesn't mean that we can't see a bigger shakeout here before another move up. So just be aware. So the levels that I'm interested in watching this weekly swing low, I'll give you the level here. So this weekly swing low is at 57,600, according to Bitfinex, 57,606. Obviously the weekly closed is an SFP for now. Let's see if we can hold above that level. If it closes below that level next week, that's a weekly market structure break. The other levels of interest for me is if we are able to bounce from here, I'm looking to get short between 63 and 65,000 in that area. That's your Fib retracement. And then that's that daily bearish order block. That is a level I'm interested in potentially shorting if we get there. If we are able to clear this SFP level at 67K or even this daily order block at 65,474, if we're able to get above there, I think there's a good chance that the low is in and we trade much higher. So 65K, that's the level we got to get a back above high time frame to start looking really bullish again. Otherwise, I'm looking to probably sell the next decent bounce. This might be it. We just came and touched 60K after making a new low. That could be the bearish retest already done and we're going to make another leg lower. I don't know for sure, but what I do know is if we are able to reclaim now, now that we've had this level break the low here, if we're able to get above here, you're going to have a decent long opportunity at least into here, at least because this would become a breaker. Right now it's acting as a bearish order block, but if we're able to flip it, it becomes a breaker. It's essentially an SR flip. We took the low, reclaim that level. I think you've got a long for, you know, 5% up into 63K, 60 to 63 to 65K. So those are kind of my key levels of interest that I'm watching here. This 60K level effectively, which right now it's looking like a bearish retest, 63 to 65 is a potential short area if we do get some more relief. And then that 57,600 level as that key weekly low that I wanna see us close above. So those are all the levels that I'm watching right now. What we wanna see here is ideally for the bulls is we maintain this range. If we break down here again, that's not a good look. So ideally, the bulls maintain this range and we go sideways and then potentially up. But for now, because the market structure is shifting on the daily and the lower time frames, the weekly put in that SFP and move back into this gray box, I'm looking for reasons to short if given the opportunity. Above 65K, I think you're pretty safe to just start getting in giga longs again for another major leg up. And if we drop hard, this is where I'm looking to buy, right? This weekly bullish order block that led to this last move up, I'm looking for reasons to get bullish. You got SR here at about 52K, and then we've got this weekly order block that starts at about 48K and goes down. So this entire area, is where I wanna say, okay, the bulls better step up here because if we get down here and we're not seeing bullishness, I don't know, that's really fucking bad. If we get down here, I wanna see the bulls step in pretty quickly and in a big way. I don't really wanna see us come down here, right? And then just diddle around and start drifting lower into here. I really wanna see, you know, maybe that's what it takes to get that next leg up. We get a big liquidation cascade down in here, put in some sort of low, right? And then start trading back up to a bajillion dollars. So those are the scenarios I'm watching effectively right now. We didn't break the low, but if we get some sort of move back here, I'm probably looking to short it. If we can get back above this area here, 65K, looking to get into major longs. If we have some sort of sweep happen, right? Run this low, close back above, anything along those lines, probably an okay opportunity to long, but I don't love how this, you know, everyone was cope posting here, right? Everyone on the feed was bearish here. We get that one green candle, everyone's bullish again. Another green candle, everyone is like, okay, the low is in Bitcoin looks great. And in reality, it's like, well, we actually just came up to the FTA, the first trouble area and we're rejecting. So not ideal. So we'll have to wait and see. I'll obviously be covering this for you guys and keeping you up to date on Twitter and in discord. But that's just kind of what I'm watching, right? You know, this top potentially could be similar to this one where it's, you know, we have that deviation, we get that breakdown, we get that retest, and then we sell right deviation, 
break down. If we get the retest, I'm looking to short. The only difference in structure between here and here is that this weekly did not close as a break in market structure and this did. It's the only difference. I'll keep monitoring it for you guys and let you know my thoughts, but hopefully what I've explained here makes sense in terms of, you know, a potential short idea here a potential long on a flip of 60k and why I would be bullish down here and then obviously get above 65k why I'm bullish there. Okay, let's look at Ethereum. So this is the Ethereum chart that we drew up last week. So again, monthly swing failure pattern, the weekly we broke above same as Bitcoin. Oops, same as Bitcoin here, right? We broke above now we're back below but we did not break that weekly low there. We held above it. Same as Bitcoin here. I think up into this kind of, you know, 4375 area in a year, like up to like 45, 44 to 45, I think is a short if we're given the opportunity here like this. That's a breaker right there. Should have been support. And look, we broke down. Look what happened. We came up, we just tagged it and we're selling off. So you do not want to see that from a market structure perspective. You know, Ethereum looks a little bit better. We did break market structure on the daily and shit. We're below that key monthly level. That's why this breaker worked out so well. You have our key high time frame level. There's your breaker came up, tagged it. We're selling off. What I do like on Ethereum is that we're trading at this level here. I mean, we're trading into it right now, but Bitcoin, this equivalent level on Bitcoin is the one that rejected us at 60 K. So you really want to see Ethereum kind of hold this area here. If the market is going to turn from here and have, you know, a bullish rest of the week up towards, you know, maybe back up into here, but you want to see Ethereum hold where it is right now. It looks a little bit stronger relative to Bitcoin, but if this looked way stronger, I think that's actually more bearish for Bitcoin. We're gonna have to wait and see, right? Again, everyone was super bearish. We had a couple green candles. Ethereum obviously outperformed majorly on the bottom, but now we're pulling back. Bearish retest for now. So we gotta see Ethereum effectively put in a higher low, kind of right where it is. I don't really wanna see it go much lower than fourth out, the, you know, this level here. So if this is gonna be a reclaim, right? We came into the level, traded below. I wanna see a higher low form here on Ethereum. Maybe it comes down into here. Right, but I don't really want to see it get back below 4,000. Get below 4,000, I'm targeting 3,600. So you want to see Ethereum put in sort of like an inverse head and shoulders here, a low, lower low, higher low. That's what I want to see here on Ethereum because this did break to the upside. So want to see Ethereum kind of hold this level here, which is 4150, kind of around that area is where I want to see Ethereum find support similar to Bitcoin. We ran the low closed above the nice thing that we had on Ethereum here last week. We talked about a retest of this weekly level at 4000. We had that big dump. It came to 4000 and then it mooned over 10% from that touch of 4000. And that is an idea that we talked about on stream last week. So if any of you longed Ethereum, it outperformed Bitcoin on the bounce, right? But Ethereum looks slightly better. Still doesn't look amazing, but looks slightly better than Bitcoin. I really want to see us put in a higher low here. This is kind of what I'm hoping for on Ethereum this to hold. So Ethereum, I want to see hold around 4150 Bitcoin. I want to see us hold around that 57600 area. If Ethereum gets below 4000, I think you look to short it down into 3600. If it gets back above 4375, I think it's a pretty safe bet to long it for higher or you can get riskier. And if you want to try and catch the higher low, go down to like the H4. This is where you want to bid it right at that 4150 level down to maybe 40. 4050. So that's a hundred dollar range on Ethereum with your stop down here. You'd want to see that be the low. The whole market kind of looks heavy right now. We have broken market structure on the daily as well. Market structure break came in, retested the breaker and is selling off. So, I mean, if you shorted this good fucking job, you're comfy as fuck. Stop to break even at this point, target this low. You're chilling. Bulls really want us to hold within this candle right here. This we have a 12 hour bullish market structure break here, 12 hour bullish order block. We really need to hold within this candle. So again, lose 4,000. I think you have an easy short into 3,600, but hopefully, cause I want things to go up. We put in a higher low around here. Come on, bro. Come on, get it together. I just chugged a fucking large coffee. So I'm like fucking, I'm dialed in right now and you're gonna start chatting shit already. I fucking hope so. Cummies, you just wanna hear me say cummies. Cummies. <laughs> That's funny. It's like ASMR, but for gross crypto coins. Come rocket. First time on the stream. I thought you looked different. You look cool though. Um, thank you. I think that's a compliment. Main is like 45 and bald. 
ban this man immediately. It makes me wonders. You know, makes me makes me's wonders. Jesus Christ. Where am I? Where am I? Ah! Sorry, there it is. You do whatever the fuck you want to do. I hope you just didn't make me say something rude in Spanish. Ass coin. Put more emphasis on the R and me peligroso. 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 I can't roll my R's with my tongue. I can't do it. I can do this, though. So. Look. I can also do this one. And I can fold my tongue in half without using my teeth. Watch. Ladies, come rock it. Oh my god, the tongue thing is gonna haunt me. I already can see my editor making a weird segment with me doing things with my tongue and it's gonna be terrible. Shout out to the editor, the homie. I love my editor, man. I love you too, man. You're a fucking legend. No, you are a fucking legend, my friend. What the fuck just happened? Come starter. It's the tiger blood, bro. It's the tiger blood. Man, this caffeine be hitting. Hitting different. Cut the shit, man. Are we going up or down? We're, we're going probably uh, up and down and then maybe sideways, right? Maybe. Maybe, baby. I wish I could just kiss his sexy bald head like Zindine kissed Fabian. Is that a shout out to like the fucking 2000 World Cup? Zinedine Zidane, you mean? I would headbutt you the exact same way. Smooth brained ape. I love that. Smooth. We're just all smooth brained apes, aren't we? Uh, Coin. The ladies loving main tongue. I cannot confirm or deny that statement. But yes, they are. And we had some good banter. We had some good jokes. I showed you some weird shit I can do with my tongue. Let's get some beats going. Crypto.com. They do those visas. Um, they, I almost just pulled mine out and showed it to you. Imagine just the full docs with my visa, my name and my visa number. There was some knowledge dropped here as well. A little bit of sauce. A little bit of thoth. I don't know why I did that. Whatever floats your boat. We were looking really good up until a couple hours ago. Funny how Twitter works, right? When the market's going up, everyone says it looks good. And when it's going down, everyone thinks it looks like shit. It's almost like no one knows what the fuck they're talking about or doing. Almost. 